Over the years, I've made many mistakes when it comes to money. I've messed up my finances so much to the point that I ended up in £36,000 worth of debt. If I knew some of these things that I know now about money when I was 18, I would have done things so differently. So with that being said, in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is sharing 18 of the things that I wish I knew about money when I was 18, so that it can help you guys make sure you don't make the same mistakes too. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, welcome. My name is Tolu and on this channel I share content all around personal finance, budgeting, frugal living and I show you how to live your best life on a budget. In today's video guys, I'm going to be sharing with you 18 of the things that I wish I knew about money when I was 18 so that it can help you on your own financial journey so that if you're young, you can win with your money at a lot younger age than I did. And if you're around my age and you're in your mid 30s, it's never too late to turn your finances around. And if you're much older, like I said, you can still do something about it today. So with that being said, I'm going to get into those 18 things right now. Just because the money's there, it doesn't mean you have to spend it. Like I was that young person that just felt like if there was money in my account, I had to spend it. Like I wasn't content, I wouldn't rest until I spent all the money that I have in my bank account, especially when it was close to payday. So if I knew, for example, I was getting paid on that Friday, by Monday, if there was still money in my account, that money needed to be gone before the next payment was coming in. That was literally my mindset and my attitude towards money back then when I was young. Cause I used to think, oh, you know, I'm gonna get paid again in a few days time, so let me just spend that money because there's more money coming in. But that is such a bad attitude to have towards money. You don't need to spend every single penny you have. What you really need to do is learn how to live below your means and learn how to do it from a young age. Cause that way, that discipline that you've started at a young age, it will take you into adult life and it will become second nature to you. So just because you can afford to buy an item doesn't mean you actually need to buy it. The reality is you cannot spend your way to financial freedom. Don't be too available. It's not every single trip that you get invited on or every function and outing that you actually need to attend like it's okay to actually say no and not go to every single function save your money and put it to better use so I remember years ago my church was planning a trip to Chesington and there was a friend of mine he was probably what 17 at the time I think I was even in my mid-20s and he was 17 so he was a lot younger than me and we were going on this trip to Chesington every single person had paid 25 pounds to go on this trip it was like the money for the coach and the money for the ticket to get into the park so everyone had paid their money it was like 25 pounds it was going to be a really, really great trip. Everyone was all excited and talking about this event that was coming up. So I asked him, are you coming on the trip? He was like, no, I'm not coming. I was like, what do you mean you're not coming? Everybody's coming on this trip. Why are you not coming? And he answered me. He was like, no, I'm not coming. I'm saving for my future. I'm saving for my future. At 17, mate, my mind was blown. I was so, so, so taken aback by what he said because I was thinking, wow, here's a 17 year old that has more wisdom than me. I actually was so embarrassed at the time because I just thought, wow, how can he at 17 know these things and me at my 23, 24 year old age, I didn't even know these things at the time. Till this day, I can still remember that conversation because it literally planted a seed in my mind and it showed me that there's actually another way of thinking when it comes to money. So you don't literally just need to spend all the money you have. You can actually plan ahead and think about your future. And this young man was thinking about his future at the age of 17. So it's no surprise, fast forward now, he's in his late 20s, early 30s. He's in a very strong financial position and he has a good life. And it's because he planted those seeds at a very young age. So it's definitely something I would advise anyone watching to do. When you're young, don't be too available. Make plans for your own future and don't allow other people to make plans for your money. The compound effect. This is something I only learned about a few years ago and I couldn't believe it. I was like, why did nobody tell me this sooner? Like this was a big money secret that had been kept for me for years and years. The compound effect, guys, if you don't know about it, get to know because the compound effect is something that so many of us miss out on because we spend all our money. If you're literally spending all the money you earn, you're never gonna get the opportunity to actually benefit from the compound effect. So what makes the compound effect so amazing is that not only are you saving your money, that's number one, then your money is actually earning interest, that's number two, but on top of that, the money that you've earned in interest also is earning money. So your money is making money to make money. 
it's mad it's so amazing like your money literally has the opportunity to work for you and put money in your pocket for the future that's if you don't spend every single penny that you have so that's something i wish i wish i wish i knew when i was younger not to spend every single penny and to understand what the compound effect really is and how to take advantage of it if i had started investing when i was 18 mate right now I'd be like retired on some beach somewhere. Okay, maybe not retired on a beach somewhere, but I'll definitely not have got myself into 36,000 pounds worth of debt. And I would definitely be in a much stronger financial position right now. So this leads on nicely to the next point, which is that always pay yourself first. This is something I learned in the book, The Richest Man in Babylon. If you haven't read that book already, I strongly recommend you read that book. I'll put a link to it in the description bar below. And I'll also link to the review that I actually did on it on my channel. But yeah, it's an amazing, amazing, amazing book. I can't stress enough how great that book actually is. Like it's a really, really, really good book if you want to really learn about money and how to be disciplined with your money, how to manage your money effectively and how to get your money working for you. And one of the key principles that was in that book was the principle of always paying yourself a tenth first. So a tenth is 10%. So always pay yourself 10% of any money you earn first before you spend any of it. What the book basically explains is that what we do as consumers is that we give all our money to everybody else. So we give our money to our landlord, we give our money to T-Mobile for our phone, not T-Mobile, it's EE now, but yeah, we give our money to our mobile phone provider. We give our money to the clothes retailer when we buy our clothes, we give it to the restaurant. So everybody else is enjoying your hard earned money, but you don't actually get to enjoy any of it. And that's because you're spending it all and giving it all away. But what the richest man in Babylon teaches is that what you need to do before you pay anybody else, pay yourself 10% of that money first so that you give that money the chance to work for you. So that 10% that you've now taken and saved and invested is now gonna be a slave and a master to work for you. So then that money is gonna make money, which is gonna make money, which is gonna make money, which is the whole compound effect, which I mentioned previously. So that is a principle that I wish I knew when I was 18 pay myself 10% first before anything else and do that from the beginning. So from when you get your first job, when you first start working, pay yourself that 10% first before anything else. Create multiple streams of income. Now this is something I never knew about or even considered before I became a mum. It was only when I became pregnant with my first son and I was on maternity leave and I realised how crap the maternity pay was that I realised that I needed to get more income coming in and I was like what can I do to make extra money and that's when I started my first business and I started thinking of other ways to create multiple streams of income but I wish when I was 18 I had that mindset and I was thinking about other ways to generate an income because that way I would have been in a much stronger position right now financially. I wish when I was 18 I thought about starting businesses, side hustling, finding other ways to create multiple streams of revenue for myself rather than just solely relying on one employer and one income and letting that be my be all and end all. Don't fall for those get rich quick schemes. Don't believe in the hype. Like if it's too good to be true, 90% of the time it really is. So don't fall for the hype. If people can tell you, oh yeah, quickly join this scheme and you'll make X, Y, Z amount within two days and sign up for this course and you'll be a millionaire overnight and do this and you'll make 50 grand in two hours. All of that stuff, leave it don't believe any of that hype the money that you get fast you lose it fast too the reality is that real wealth is built consistently over time and that's what you need to focus on when you're young the younger you start the sooner you'll start to reap the rewards of all your investment and all your labor so definitely 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 don't believe the hype that people tell you about get rich quick schemes i remember back when i was in college actually and you had all these guys these ac guys if you know what ac guy is then you know if you don't then yeah, sorry, but all these AC guys will be telling you about all these opportunities to make money. It's like, yeah, give me your bank account and I'm just gonna quickly drop a quick 10K in there and you're gonna get 2K of it and then that's it. Yeah, so just quickly let me use your card and I'm gonna take the other 8K. Okay, that sounds good, isn't it? Quick, 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 just give you my card and I get 2,000 pounds just for borrowing you my card. Oh, that sounds sick. And those are the kind of schemes that were around when I was in college. And I know so many people that actually fell for that and then later on ended up having to pay the bank back thousands of pounds and ended up getting themselves into a lot of trouble in the process. Thank God I didn't fall for it, but I can't lie, the temptation was real because it's like, what? 2,000 pounds just for giving you my bank card? Why would you not want to do it? Obviously it's illegal, but <laughs> that aside, they made it seem like it was a surefire thing like there's no way anything will go wrong like it's just all you have to literally do give me your card and then that's it but all that stuff sounds too good to be true trust me it's too good to be true your credit score is actually so important and the mistakes that you make when you're young 
they follow you into adulthood. So I didn't realize how significant and how important your credit score actually was until I got a lot older and until I actually wanted to buy my first house. Luckily for me, I'd kept up with my credit card payments and everything like that in my teens and my 20s so it didn't affect me in a negative way when we came to buy a house it's not because I was intentionally being responsible and protecting my credit score not at all it was just fortunate that I was just keeping on top of my credit card payments and things like that but I didn't realize the correlation between the two or how important it really is to have good credit and develop good credit very early on if I could do things differently I definitely would have been a lot more intentional about developing my credit score so definitely 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 your credit score don't play with that thing it is very important so don't be taking out mobile phone contracts and not paying or taking out loans and overdrafts and not paying that back either because this kind of thing is going to follow you into adulthood to the point that you're going to go to a mobile phone shop to get a mobile phone contract and you're going to be declined and denied the opportunity of taking out the contract because your credit score is so bad i know people that that's actually happened to so it's definitely a real thing so be very responsible when it comes to your credit so that you don't ruin your credit score the Joneses effect or keeping up with the Joneses, don't do it, it's not worth it. You're gonna get yourself into a lot of trouble financially trying to keep up with the Joneses. It's only now that I'm in my mid thirties that I'm finally recovering from the Joneses effect. If I was more conscious of this when I was 18 and I understood what the Joneses effect really was, I would have been more mindful of it from a younger age so that now when I'm in my thirties, it wouldn't even be a consideration, it wouldn't be a thing because I just literally would just be living my life oblivious of what everybody else is doing. But when you're young, there's so much pressure on you to keep up with what everybody else is doing to be relevant to be trendy to be cool to fit in there's so many things that put pressure on you at the age of 18 and when you're very young but if you can from a young age be mindful of this and be intentional about going against the grain and not conforming to what everybody else says is the standard of what cool is you'll be in a lot stronger position as you go on through life and as you grow up because you will grow up and develop a thicker skin and develop more of an immunity to what everybody else is doing. Because the reality is you're trying to keep up with people that are trying to keep up with people and everybody's trying to keep up. So then nobody's ever going to get to that place of arrival. Everyone's always going to be pursuing the next thing, the next buzz, the next cool craze, the next hype. And you're always just going to be following, 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 and you're never going to reach that place of satisfaction. So what you really need to do is really seek that internal validation and that internal peace because don't wait for other people to validate you validate yourself because they're not going to give you that validation that you're seeking i mean it took me 30 plus years to finally catch that realization so i just hope that if you're watching this and you're a lot younger than me then catch that realization at a lot younger age and it will save you so much money in the future because you won't feel that pressure to keep spending money unnecessarily just because everybody else is doing it hsbc barclays natwest all these banks they're not your friend. They don't care about you. They just want your money and they're gonna do whatever it takes to get their hands on it. And that is something you need to realize very early on in life because if you don't, you're gonna end up falling victim and falling prey to all their strategies and all of their tactics to make you spend money unnecessarily. The banks are so cunning, they're so clever and they know exactly what they're doing. They're so strategic in their movements. So I remember when I first went off to university at the tender age of 18, moved away from home, moved all the way up to Birmingham. I'm from South London, so the move from South London to Birmingham was a very far move and I moved away from home away from my family away from my friends away from everything that I knew to this whole new city went to freshers week for the first week and you have freshers fair you have all these different stands for like all the different committees and stuff for you to sign up and get acquainted with what's available within a university but in the midst of all of that what you also have is all these banks and when I say banks I mean every single bank you can think of was at that freshers fair so you had HSBC but Please, Nat West, all of these banks were there preying on all of us fresh freshers. Damn! Fresh freshers. They were there preying on all of us freshers, all of us with our naive selves, and they lure you over with their free chocolates and their free sweets and their free cupcakes. And they're like, oh, come, 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 come. And they're all like calling you over, beckoning you over to come over to them. You get to the stand and they'd start telling you about all this free money that you have available. They're like, oh, did you know you can get an overdraft? I'm also eligible for a credit card. It's like, oh, credit card, me? What credit card? I can get credit card. Oh, and I can get an overdraft. All I'm hearing in my head is free money. That's all I'm hearing. Free money, free money, free money. Interest free for three years. Three years. That's ages away. That's all I'm thinking. And I just signed up with HSBC, taking on the credit card, taking the overdraft, and off I went 
about my business. But then fast forward four years, I've done university, I've done my placement, I've graduated. All of that debt in which I acquired while I was a student was there, but guess what? Now they want interest. Now they want more money on top of the money I actually borrowed from them. So all this free money that they gave me in the beginning that they made me think I was never gonna have to pay back, they wanted it back and they wanted it back with interest. And that is the reality of banks. The banks at the end of the day, they're not your friend. They just wanna make money off you. And they know, they're very strategic in their approach. They know exactly what they're doing. They know that students, obviously when you're a student, you don't have a job, you don't have an income. You have no means of paying this interest. But they know that when you graduate, you're hopefully gonna get a job and then you're gonna have money to be able to pay them back. So long as they're getting their money, they don't care that you don't have money left over at the end of the month. They don't care that as soon as you get paid, you're back in the red again. That's not their business. So long as they're making their money, they're happy. What I would have said to my younger self is when these banks approach you, offering you free money, interest-free money, interest-free for two years, just decline it and manage whatever money that you actually have. You don't need to take on any unnecessary debt. Money in itself doesn't have the power or the ability to actually make you happy. It's simply just a tool and should be used accordingly. I really wish that I knew this when I was 18 because I think I would have even made very different career choices because when I was thinking about what I wanted to do career-wise and in the future, I was just thinking about what's gonna pay me the most money. That's all I was caring about. I just cared about money. Quality of life and all of those things, job satisfaction, I wasn't that bothered about it when I was 18. I was just thinking about how can I get money and how can I get paid? But really and truly, making all that money doesn't really mean anything if you're not happy and you're not satisfied doing what you're doing. That's number one. But also, all of that money means nothing if you have none of it left at the end of the month anyway because your expenses are so high. So with that being said, I definitely would do things very differently if I was 18. I wouldn't be so focused on money and making so much money. I would look more internally at what actually makes me happy in life, what I actually want to do in life, and what I'll be happy doing even if I wasn't getting paid. And I would focus on pursuing that. I wish I actually knew that it was so important to have financial goals that you're working towards. That is something that I never had in my teens or in my 20s and it's only literally in the last four or five years that I've actually started thinking about setting financial goals. The only time I actually ever thought about financial goals was when I was saving for a particular item. So like when we were saving up to buy our first home, that was the only time we started thinking, okay, yeah, we need to save X, Y, Z amount to buy our home. But in general, I never really had financial goals or a financial plan, but I think it is so crucial and it is so important to have a financial plan and have a financial goal that you're working towards. Because if you don't have a goal or a plan in which you're working towards, then how do you know what direction you're actually going in? Or how will you actually know when you've actually arrived at your destination if you don't have a plan? I think it's so important to set yourself financial plans and goals from the very beginning when you start earning money. Following and from that point, as well as having a financial plan, I cannot stress the importance of having a budget. Smart people. Budget! Oh my days. If I knew about budgets when I was 18, right now, I think I'd be a millionaire, you know? Maybe not a millionaire, but I definitely would be in a stronger financial position if I knew about creating a budget and actually maintaining a budget when I was 18. In my teens, in my 20s, I knew how much I was gonna get paid and I knew how much my bills were gonna be. So long as I had enough to cover my bills, I was cool, I was fine. But there's so much more to managing your finances responsibly than just having enough to pay your bills and just being able to get by in order to actually win with your money and actually grow that money further, you actually need to be very intentional with that money, have a budget, create a plan for your money and stick to it. Financial education and financial literacy is actually so important at a young age. Like if you know about money from very young and you know how to manage it responsibly, money will actually be good to you later on in life as you get older. Unfortunately for a lot of us, we weren't given the tools when it comes to finances at a young age. I mean, school managed to teach us about everything else but how to manage money not knowing that money was actually going to be one of the most important things that we're going to actually need to know and understand growing up and going through adult life those tools we weren't given at a young age when we should have been given them. So because we weren't given those tools at school and at a young age, and for some of us, we didn't learn these things at home, unfortunately, it's now up to us to actually learn and educate ourselves. So if you don't have that financial education and that financial background, then take it upon yourself to learn and educate yourself because these tools are actually gonna be very important and it's gonna help you as you go through life. So financial education, if you don't know, get to know, pick up a book and learn. There's so many books out there. There's a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of information out there for you to actually learn. So I wish when I was 18, I actually knew this and I actually took the time to learn. 
so that I would have made such better financial decisions when I was growing through life. Work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. I don't know if you're familiar with that saying, but it is so true. Like you do need to give yourself fun money and permission to spend, but there does need to be parameters and there does need to be boundaries. I think it's very important to give yourself an allowance and actually stick to that allowance so that you can cultivate and develop good money disciplines. Pensions, okay, so when I used to hear about pensions from my employers, straight away I would switch off because I'll think, oh, that's for old people, that's not important, that has nothing to do with me right now. I'm still young, I'm still fresh, I'm still in my prime. So I wasn't even trying to hear any of what they were saying when it came to pensions. The only time I finally got a pension is when the government made it mandatory that we all have to have pensions. And even then, I made sure I only did the minimum contribution over the years that I was working at my former employer. With my former employer, they actually match your contribution. So if at the time I think I was contributing the minimum, which was like 3%, but you could go all the way up to 7% contribution and your employer will also match that 7%. So that would have been 14% contribution to my pension every month if I had actually done the maximum contribution myself. But what did I do? I only did the 3%. So I was only getting 3% from my employer. So that 4% every single month for 10 years, I missed out on because I wanted more of my money to myself. But looking back, that was not a smart move. Like I really, really, really should have gone for the maximum contribution to my pension so that I got the maximum amount from my employer. What a big mistake that was because not only was I missing out on the actual contribution that my employer was planning to make, I also missed out on the money that that money would have made. So like I mentioned earlier about the compound effect, I missed out on all that compound interest. I was with my former employer for 10 years. So that was 10 years worth of employer contribution that I missed out on because I wanted to keep more of my money for myself so not only did I miss out on that money that I could have got from my employer I missed out on all the interest that could have been earned on that money too so don't make that mistake that I made don't think that because you're young now you don't need to worry about your pension listen you're not going to be young forever even when I say my age to people it shocks me that that's my actual age I didn't ever think that this time will come but it came and it came like that I went from being 21 and being in my prime to now being in my mid 30s still in my prime but time has gone time is flying so right now even with your current employer if you're doing the minimum pension contribution I definitely recommend. I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that, so don't take anything I say as financial advice. But if I could do things differently and I could go back in time and I was 18 again, I definitely would have matched my employer's contribution to the highest possible percentage. Because when I look back, what was I spending all that money on? That 4% a month that I didn't want to put in my pension. Mate, where's that money? What did I do with that money? I couldn't even tell you. That money's gone, gone, gone and forgotten. By not actually taking your employer's contribution, all you're doing is leaving free money on the table. Table. Don't when do I was it. younger, I had so much disposable income, it was unreal. I didn't earn that much because I worked in retail and things like that. But when I was in my late teens, I had so much money and I squandered it all. Like, I wish, I wish. When I was 18, somebody sat me down and said, Tolly, listen, this money that you're spending now and you're enjoying living your best life, you're not going to be young like this forever. You're not going to be in your parents' house forever. You're not always going to have all of this free money, disposable money at your fingertips. So while you're young and you have all this money, put it to better use. Start investing that money from a young age because as you get older and you go through life and you get more responsibilities, what you find is that you don't have as much disposable money like that. So while you're young, take that money and use it wisely. Nobody's saying don't enjoy, don't live your life. Definitely enjoy, definitely live your life. But do it in moderation and recognize the importance of having boundaries and setting yourself limits. Learn how to practice delayed gratification. If there's something that you want, save up for it. Don't buy things on credit just because you can pass the credit check. If you don't need it urgently and you can actually wait and save your money to purchase the item, do it because you're gonna save yourself so much money in the long run on interest and things like that. A car's sole purpose is to get you from point A to point B. Insofar as your car is able to do this for you, that's all you really need. You don't need to now go and collect a car on finance, commit yourself to three, four, five hundred pound monthly payments, just in the name of saying, I'm driving a nice car, I'm driving a new car. It's not necessary. And that money that you're committing to monthly payments, you can literally take that money and invest it in your future. And what you'll see is that not only Will that money grow and make money? But that money is going to start making money for you too. So when it comes to buying a car, get a used car, get a reliable car, but don't commit to payments unnecessarily. Where you can, in fact, apply this to all areas and everything that you own, that like where you can avoid getting things on contract, do so. Just pay cash, pay up front and leave as much of your money and your income every month accessible so that you can take that money and put it to other good uses. But when all your income is tied up to all of these contracts that you've signed up to, it's going to be very hard to manoeuvre financially and actually pursue your financial goals. 
So those are the 18 things that I wish I knew when I was 18 about money. It would be great to hear any of the things that you wish you knew when you were younger when it comes to money or any of the money lessons that you actually did learn when you were 18 that would be useful to other people in the community. It would be really good if you could leave it in the comment section below because I definitely read through all the comments and I love engaging with you guys. So with that being said, please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet done so already, share this video with anybody that you think will benefit from this content and these 18 things that I've learned. And that's literally it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video.